Yeah, my grandfather uh, graduated from Huntsville in 1932. He was president of the class of 1932, and he was uh, captain of the football team. And they also decided that year that they needed a homecoming queen, and they named my grandmother as the homecoming queen because they were dating. So they ended up getting married, and then he uh, read for the bar. So he, he read the law so he could be eligible to take the bar, and he took extension courses out of Chicago, LaSalle extension courses. And then in 1937, he received his law license, and he told me that he made the highest score that ever been made on the bar exam at that time. That's what they told him. Then his law practice started out in the back of his father-in-law's store, who's my grandfather, and he prepared documents and for people in Dallas Mill Village and wills and deeds and bills of sale and gave them legal advice. And then he went to World War II uh, and was uh, stationed up in Wisconsin and then in Michigan. Uh, and then when he came back, he, he started practicing law uh, full time and he served as uh, uh, an inferior court judge, which is the district court judge today. And then he uh, ran for probate judge. And then he also was uh, very active in the Lions Club, the Lions International. And uh, they were big into rural electrification and then they got into rural uh, telephone. So he helped found the New Hope Telephone Co-op. I was just a little kid, 10, 12 years old at the time. And I went on a lot of trips with him and, and explaining the need for a telephone in the areas of New Hope, Grant, and Owens Crossroads. So we still represent the New Hope Telephone Cooperative. And, and you know, at one time they had party lines and they had crank telephones, and now they're doing a $26 million expansion in fiber optics, which will have a bundle of telephone and cable TV and internet. So we've seen that company come a long, long way. My grandfather and my father worked together for a number of years until his death in 1971. And then my father and Mr. Beeson were lifelong friends, and um, so George came back to Huntsville to work with him. Yeah, I came in in 1972 from the FBI, living in Cleveland, Ohio. Doug called me and wanted me to come back and practice law, and I wanted to come back and practice law. But I remember standing outside the front door, waiting on the office to open. We had Glenn Manning. I worked for Glenn Manning and Doug. And then after a year or so, Glenn went with another law firm and Doug and I set up our partnership. So we've been together ever since. And then um, I graduated from uh, uh, law school in 89 and I did a year of tax law school and I came back in 1990 uh, and have been practicing ever, ever since. And then my brother came here uh, about 1992 and then George Beeson's daughter came here in 1995. So, um, and we, since we had all grown up together, it was kind of a natural fit to come in and, and get different specialties and to grow the practice. You know, I think part of it is that family, you, um, you trust family and that you know that they're going to be doing the best for the overall good and that no one's trying to um, outdo the other person. It's the ultimate trust that you think they have the best interest of everyone here and the common good. Since that time, with all of us back, we've hired uh, some new attorneys, uh, we've expanded our areas of practice, and uh, we've had our practice grow with the city of Huntsville. The firm grew up with the town, and, and since George and Doug have both been practicing 40 plus years, Huntsville's changed a lot, and so has our firm. And we've grown, but we've grown in the right size and the right manner to give the same level of service we give now with the eight lawyers is the same service that I believe from listening to Doug Senior talk that his dad gave when the firm was started in 1937, which is what we're committed to is while we may be growing, the level of care and quality service that we give doesn't change. It's an amazing amount of time when you consider how long 75 years is. And since I've been working here, um, a, a lot of that knowledge has been passed down to me, a lot of that understanding. Um, and it, it's been invaluable for me to be able to not only learn from that, but also to be a part of that and be able to hopefully uh, contribute to um, the impeccable reputation which this, this firm has. 75 years being in business kind of speaks for itself and something that's invaluable for a young attorney is credibility and reputation. Um, in this profession, it's everything. And to come to a place where you've got George Beeson um, and Doug Martinson, Morris Lilenthal, um, Elizabeth Moore, people like that who are visible in the community, 
that have done things the right way. And when you speak to opposing counsel, they have nothing but nice things to say about them, um, even if those opposing counsels have lost. We're a full service law firm here, and, and that's kind of a lost art today. And uh, I think people take a lot, of, a lot of solace in knowing that if they have an issue, that they can call us and we can handle it. And if we can handle it, for example, we don't handle bankruptcy. If it's something we don't handle, we'll find you somebody that's very capable of handling that, somebody that I'd send my own mom to or a relative of mine too. So I think where I see the firm going is, is staying more involved in the community, helping others as we've done in the past and continuing to grow the firm in a, in a, in a manner such that we can continue client commitment. With so many ways we've been involved with them, uh, you know, they, 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 I know we call it a full service uh, family business and that's what they have provided to our family uh, in many different ways, we've taken advantage of that. Uh, in buying businesses, uh, like the Pepsi-Cola businesses, uh, they have provided uh, assistance in dealing with shareholder issues, with major customer issues. Uh, they've uh, dealt with us uh, with, uh, in the real estate business and buying and selling, uh, uh, residential, commercial. Uh, we've dealt with them in foreclosures, uh, zoning issues. Uh, I mean, it, this is a whole array of things. If you are in business, uh, you're going to have to find a good, competent law firm like Marks and Beast if you can provide those services to you. you you're just not going to get assistance from big firms like that. What I do like working here is that we've represented so many people for so many years. Uh, so when people come in and say, oh, well, your grandfather uh, did this deed for me, and, uh, and then we're actually doing the, the continuation of that deed. My father um, met a lot of people, and of course at that time the county was agricultural. He had a lot of farmers that he represented. Now most of their farmland is subdivisions, but the law practice evolves. Um, instead of representing farmers in the agricultural business, we're representing farmers' grandchildren who are now developers. So I think the legacy is that there's sort of been a continuity of what has happened here. We've learned what, what takes and gotten us to make 75 years of success is our clients. And how do, we, how do we benefit from that? What do we do? We put clients first. Client commitment comes first. And when they come first, everything else falls in line.